Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to everyone, uh, mainly Dr. Lut. So uh, let me first uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my initial idea that I have uh, just prepared in this uh, two days. And uh, it's good for me to give the, uh, feed, the constructive feedback from you and from my colleagues in order to improve and to move forward in the coming semesters, inshallah. So uh, let me say something before I also go deeper in my, in my what I have prepared for this presentation today. Uh, since um, uh, since uh, Monday presentations, really I've been uh, so inspired, as you said in the presentation, uh, to use uh, the Fleming Classroom in my teaching uh, courses in the future. And really I've been thinking about how we can do it. And mainly when you talked about the four pillars of uh, Fleming Classroom or blended learning, in terms of the environment, in terms of the students, the educators, and all these things. But I, I, I've, I've come to the conclusion that I said to myself that it could be done. You know, though we have uh, been facing, you know, many challenges as Dr. Hassan also Shaheen, you know, shared last time. So my presentation uh, today, I, I have prepared, I think, four files. First, I'd like to share the general file. And then I go one by one using the terms that you shared with us, Dr. Lut, for, the, for that one. So let me, uh, can I share my, can I share yes, my Yes, yes, absolutely, yes, you can. Yes, you start, okay, you are welcome. Is it now? Am I, yeah, yeah, it's now, yeah. Okay, so let me start with the overall one. So yes, again, uh, let me introduce myself again now formally. Yes, uh, I am Kamal Jamil Badrasawi. Uh, from College of Humanities and Education Sciences, uh, Palestine Politic University. So the, first, the, the, the idea came to my mind uh, on Monday to start, you know, living uh, the course called the Set Methodology in TESOL. And I put TESOL between two brackets because I think that all the things they have this type of courses in, uh, on research methodology. So maybe the module that inshallah we are going to come out with, maybe it might be helpful, you know, to all you know, uh, to all disciplines you know in the in the in the university, inshallah. So for this course, why I we, usually we have the undergraduate students, mainly year three and above, and those all of them they are we kind of call them the twenty first uh, century learners, and they come out they they early, they they always use the technology in their daily life, and the last one they come out they come without what without prior knowledge and research and uh, either about the knowledge or the research skills. So now why why this one, these points, I later I show them in the, the other templates, but let me share with you how the idea came to my mind. So this type, this type of courses, right, uh, they have a theory and a practice. And the students, they sh we should provide them with knowledge about research, what's research, steps of research, and how they will conduct the research and what are the skills that they have to have in order to conduct the research. So in our course, right, we have to provide them with the knowledge, the theory, and also to equip them with the skills. I mean to say that they have to practice and to come out with maybe a mini proposal also and to with a mini, uh, mini research report. Later also I share with you the course outline when I look at the course outline, I said to myself that we can divide it into three main parts. So this uh, division can help us to come out with the modules, you know, in the end. So the first part may be like one to four weeks or one to four, you know, like uh, main topics. I think we can divide them under what? What they should know. What's the knowledge that they need to know when they come to do, to do with, to deal with the research. The, the bulk here will be the second part of the course will be how. So how to do the research. So we have to expose them to the research designs and also to data collection and also to data analysis. This part mainly they have to do learning by doing, not just only watching or listening or sharing. They have to do something that. Then after that, we can come to the third main part is what. What they, what they now at the end when they know when they do now, show me your output in terms of maybe 
a small or a mini research report based, you know, depends on the level you know, as undergraduate students. So it means, you know, really sharing my experience in teaching such courses in this university and also outside. Really, it takes much of my time inside to this, you know, to explain the theory of research and what's research and the types of research there. Because, you know, students, they come out without prior knowledge. So I mean to say that we have to spend much time with them to explain more. So I think that when Dr. Lucha does the idea of premium classroom, I said, oh, good, that maybe they spend much time outside the class. They read uh, on their space. They try to digest what they can do. But when they come to my class, I just share with them, discuss, and to save the time for what? For the main part to practice, to, to, to practice what they have learned. And here, while I'm preparing this file, yes, I have read and go hung up through all the slides and the presentation that Dr. Lut shared with us. They were very wonderful, very interactive to me, and I learned a lot from them. So I caught these two quotations from there that helped me why I want to go particularly flipping that class, that, that particular course. Mainly, it makes my environment more dynamic, more interactive students they learn, they can get it, and they can do, inshallah, at the end of that one. Then I asked myself the question that raised last time before flipping that we have to identify our needs. And I came with, a, with an idea that I think that we can classify the needs that we needed in flipping classrooms or maybe blended courses or blending learning. I think that we can categorize them based on the four pillars shared with Dr., uh, by Dr. Lut last time. I think the first one, we had the flexible environment learning culture. Hopefully we are moving toward that one. And thank you, Dr. Hassan. He has shared, you know, last time the university, you know, uh, trained at the university intention and the steps that they have you know, uh, already started toward pushing and, you know, the staff to have that type of environment. But for me, I'm not going to wait for the university to have this full or ideal environment that we wish to have it soon, inshallah, in the near future. At least I can deal with my students, prepare myself, and prepare my students for that type of, in, of living classroom. Then the content, this one, the part that uh, I like in this workshop, by the end of this workshop, that I can really uh, parse you know, uh, my content and divide it and come out with the certain models that you know, uh, fits using the flipped classroom. Yes, the educators is a very challenging to us. We need to improve ourselves. And I think this workshop is one of the things that we are going to get a benefit from that one yeah. and also with the help yeah. of the university. Well, so these are now, now I start with okay. what I have in my mind based on the, on the models or the table shared uh, by Dr. Lut. So the second scenario we have planned okay. in the process here, we have mapping my digital competence. I can say myself, I can describe myself based on the categories and description given by Dr. Lut last time. I think that I am a level A tour, which means that I'm exploring and also I'm using uh, to some extent technology in my teaching. So I can say I am between uh, A2 to B1 and moving forward in the future to be more and more. I know some of the applications and tools that I've been using them. And I know others that I know about them, but not use, uh, hopefully that when I apply a few classroom, I can use them in the future. So my target, as the doctor said last time, I want to change from shift to to be best, to be more active. And for me, just only to replace, but to transform and to use that one. So this is a, sorry for this long introduction, but now I go directly to what I have prepared based on the tables shared by Dr. Lu. So the first one here, I think let me minimize. So as I said before, I think most of the points that I shared already, but let me now uh, organize them in the way that it, it, it could be meaningful to me and maybe to my colleagues here. So the course here is set methodology in Tesla, as I said, why to practice I said before. So here we have, uh, this course is divided, I think into 16 weeks and maybe 14 to 15 weeks. And I divided them, this course outline will be divided into three main parts, I said. And from that one, we can come up with our own models. I don't have yet, I have not decided on the final or the actual models, but the workshop, hopefully by the end of this workshop, this week and also in August, hopefully that we can come out with the final or the semi-final, you know, models that we can apply in the coming semesters. 
So we have we have what that is it, and we have how and we have what. So this is my my roadmap will be with me when I decide on my modules. I expect to have six to nine modules. I'm not sure about it, but hopefully that when I get the feedback, I can do it. So here we have, I put some examples for the face-to-face -face and online, you know, online topics that can be shared with the students and maybe the platforms and maybe the assignments. And also the other side, I put here the other side. Here I can see that also some of the exercises or the hands-on that the students should work on either in the classroom and also maybe they prepare in the uh, home at home and when they come, they can what they can do inside the classroom. So this is one of the, 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 the first template. The second one that I put more there is this one. So here, let me start a, a which part to study. We start with, with the course, as I said before, this is the myth, reset with the course. It has theory and practice. And uh, the learning our objectives that I want, I as a lecturer want to focus on when I go to my class. And this one match will be matched with the learning outcome that I put them here down later, I share with you. So the first objective that I like to have in all course using the flipped classroom is to provide students with this information or knowledge about research and mainly the steps of research and also to develop their uh, skills in doing the research. And the last one to guide them or to coach them how to write their proposal and to come out with their mini research or the knowledge and they say they can make use huh, of them when they come to year four, when they want to do their directed you know, research or projects, they can apply what we can do there. So how do I want my students to learn and to prove that skills and knowledge? Hopefully by using more student centered learning teaching strategies, giving more hands-on, make them more active and give the assignments that really they just do not just only to know up, up, about the things. These are the resources that I'm going to make use of online materials, books, videos, and also whatever related to the course and also fit the levels and the needs of the students as my first colleague you know, has said in his, you know, his presentation. Now the, yes, we were going to, I'm not alone. Uh, we shall work with side by side with my colleagues uh, led by our co-director, Dr. Rastan Shaheen and our team and also university level and also with the department level and also other lecturers teaching the same course or other similar course or who are using the flipped classrooms. And uh, yes, also students and also other experts like our colleagues now who are organizing uh, this uh, this workshop uh, led by Dr. Luth and other respected you know, organizers. So if I go to the right here, we have, uh, we have, do I know the group of, yes, I know them. Uh, they will be year three. And I said the most important part that I always emphasize when I uh, talk to my colleagues or also in other universities outside before I came here to PPU, that really the characteristics of all those students nowadays are really different from our generation and, and earlier generation. They are very interested in technology and technology is, is a seamless part of their daily life. So I mean to say the big question, the challenge now, how to make use of technology, right? In, um, in the teaching and learning process, right? So this is the, I think this is the challenge that we have to think. And it's not the challenge, it's the necessity that we have to inculcate you know, in our teaching process. And yes, based on this course, they don't have prior knowledge about it. So it means the job will be more difficult, more challenging to me, how to make the class more interactive, you know, and to give them what they need and to apply what they want to do. Uh, how, how will I uh, deliver my course content uh, by link path in Mondo? This one, I think that we need uh, to, to have more training on that one. And I think this workshop will help me to come out with, you know, final, is how can I really deliver my course? But for the time being, what I can say, I can divide my course content into main topics and subtopics and provide brief explanation for each topic using any platform that I can feel is convenient and I can use it confidently and also the students, they can use it. And also by providing some supplemental reading to them 
and also make more online activities. And I also I use the word conditionally, the test, and I got it from the presentation last time about talking about the conditionality. That one is very good one that uh, how they can do something they pass from one stage to another stage because research methodology is what is go step by step. So if they master step one, then they can go step two, step three, step four, step five, till they what they end and come out with something that really shows that they have acquired and learned what I want them to learn, right? And uh, if I go down here for what are the pitfalls, I am not sure what exactly the pitfalls here means in this type of template, but what I can see for me, I'm not saying pitfalls, but really I can see maybe the challenge or maybe the things that are that I have to focus or maybe I need to spend much time thinking about it when I go uh, do, make, dealing with a flipped classroom. The one that is preparing suitable materials, right? Or the models that fit the model that meet students level and help them understand and interact in a class. And I think this one, the, what, why we need flip, you know, class, flip the, the course or maybe using other technology uh, tools or other platforms or whatever, you know, studies that we need our students to understand interact and also apply. But preparing for that one, I think this one will be the bulk and also the, the challenge that I'm going to face. I'm not sure about my colleagues, but maybe you can share. I think that we are sharing the same, you know, uh, worry about that one. So for my students, um, I use the word readiness here, right? Uh, for them, because when I look at the, at the, at the, at the and the, you know, the process of living classroom or other, you know, other types of strategies or methods, I can see that, are we ready or are my students ready to really to be engaged or to, to get that, uh, to use that, to help me out using this living uh, classroom effectively in terms of the knowledge, in terms of the scale, in terms of maybe in the infrastructure, right? Are they ready or there? So because of this, I said to myself first, before I go to do all these things, I have to really to analyze my context, to see what I have, what my students they have, and what they lack, and how can I support and how can I support each other, either from university level, from colleagues, from department, from police. So we have to analyze the context. Then from there, we can decide and move forward. So what will be my time? Yes, my time, I'm sure, linked to will be uh, linked to the to the to the first one, the preparation for and following up the students. Well, sometimes we do, but maybe we cannot follow up, right? But luckily, Dr. Lo shared with us how we can uh, monitor, you know, the students' progress and also our progress as also as the lecturers for that one. What hardware or software we need? I think we need uh, many things, but the most important is, is definitely PCs, laptops, right? And if we have specific labs, it will be wonderful. And we need Wi-Fi spaces and those tools and the platforms that can help me and my students to facilitate my work. And I'm sure Dr. Lud and others, they will share with us some of the tools that we can use in order when we prepare our models for that one. And I have, I have an idea about some of them that they can help me maybe later in, uh, in the coming, in the second phase of the, of the workshop. Maybe you can share what I have and what uh, the respected organizers have. Then we can come out and select which one really fits my, my context. Now, what will be the outcome and what will be the outcome for my students? I think for me, I was thinking how to put all the things in one uh, paragraph or one you know, short, you know, short sentence to, to reflect what I have in my mind. And then I said to myself, for me to be able to deliver the course content in an interactive environment where students can get learning that is more meaningful. This I can say that this one, it summarizes, it summarizes what is in my mind and maybe why I need to flip uh, my class. So if I'm able to do so, I can say that really I am, you know, I have done something, you know, useful to my students. When I say learning is meaningful, and now the concept is used now in education is what is a meaningful learning. It means students, they get it, but we want to ensure that they can apply it, you know, when they are, or they transfer the knowledge 
when they go outside in other contexts similar to what we have been exposed them to do so. And for the students now, hopefully that when I apply this type of living a classroom, teaching this particular course, hopefully they have been more involved in the learning process, understand and apply what they have learned in their current and future tasks. So this is what I summarize, you know, what is in my mind and what I hope to get by the end, not only in this course, huh? in all courses that I'm teaching, but now I'm focusing on the course that I have. So how am I going to evaluate? And I think uh, Dr. Lut is my, 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 really my worry and my concern and also not maybe only me, I think maybe uh, people who are dealing with, you know, edu in edu people in education, now they are uh, discussing the issue of assessment part. Sometimes we teach online, but really the, the challenging part of teaching online or using such strategies in our teaching is what is the assessment part. How really to assess and to make sure that our students are improving and they are getting and they are what really the assessment is reflecting you not know, really their performance or the achievement in that one. But for the time being, I put in certain assignments. For my assignment for face to face, will be focused on more doing and more practicing, right? Because we need them to learn outside. But when they come to me, I want to share with them and to see that they are doing something, at least in the class. And they go back and try to complete the job outside, maybe either individual work, group work, or even maybe first level. The online, yes, we need, maybe can, they can do presentation. They can I ask all the questions, the quizzes. And in the quizzes now, we can use now platforms like Quizlet, like quizzes. I think we have some platform that I've been using. They can help me to do so. So this is in general, this one, uh, 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 template number two. And I think template number three is almost similar to what I have put here. But let me share with you template number three. So this is the one that uh, I have prepared. I'm not sure if it is a clear or not. Uh, Dr. Noha? Yes, it's okay. Yes. Okay, yes. so this one. There is any question. Uh, this is the same. Uh, this, is the one, no. this one, number two, just only two, three minutes, Dr. Noha. So, yeah. So, this one, I the same of what I said before, the description. And here, I want to start maybe online. I put here uh, 30, less than 30, <laughs> because I still remember start smaller. <laughs> so, we start small. But we become bigger, bigger, shall we? All uh, the things, you know, I'll go ahead. I don't know uh, what do you mean by Dr. Lut by group size. If, uh, is it small? I don't know what's the number. We say small or yeah, okay. inter or we say, we say, I yeah. have groups of 400. So the, these are large groups. Yes, uh, I don't. Okay. Yeah, I think your, your group for us is intermediate. But okay. <laughs> So it's usually we have usually we have per section we have 30 35, but I don't know understanding what they mean by yeah, it's sure. It, yeah, it wasn't it well explained. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So this one is other learning outcomes and objectives that I want to achieve in my course, but really they are meet the bloom taxonomy. They have to demonstrate understanding the things. After they understand, they have to identify really by themselves the steps of research. When they understand and they identify. Now we expose them to apply what they have learned. So since they start you know, applying the, the things that they got through the knowledge, right, the theoretical part, you give them hands-on practices, then now we expect them to come out to the last point is, is also expose them to how to come up with their research uh, instruments. Now we expect them the fourth level is what, is to, to write their own out, to collect their own data, in a short, you know, later, or, you know, that's limited, you know, uh, samples, you just click that, right? Then you try to apply the right uh, short report, uh, collect, analyze, and come out with your short, you know, report. I know it's a very big job for these undergraduate students, but I think that it is possible if we really apply this type of living classroom, and really if my students take their own part seriously, <laughs> And also my part series, I think that we can do something, you know, with them. And here we have the uh, online course content. I said about it. We have the theory and the practice. And here, uh, this one I suggest to put in the face-to-face, -face, mainly the theoretical part with little bit of practice, but sorry, the, the moral practice here will be on the face-to-face. -face. 
we had a two, we shared that we discussed with them the what they have read, but more also to do and to apply inside the classroom. So here on the last one here, this I said I shared with you my Dr. Lud, my concern is about the evaluation part really and the six month part. I think that I think this is an issue as facing you know a lot of educators in all over the world, even in high developed you know countries. I'm sure about it, right? Because they, they the concern is now applying COVID-19 online. What now how we can assist our students to give fair, fair assessment, right? When I say fair or right assessment is that really does not reflect exactly what students can do and what they have at our courses. I think still research is going on. I have written that one still is going on. But alhamdulillah, I think nowadays the situation is much better than when COVID-19 has already started. Now things are getting better and we are learning and we are trying to modify and to adjust in our models accordingly. But I put some of the things that we have formative assessment should be. Then we have we have to have the summative assessment. The formative assessment this one should be linked to the models that we will do. When I teach something, then I have to assess. Another thing I have to assess, it means by the time, by the end of the modules, I have now, I know the student's progress. So the formative assessment can help me to, to monitor the progress of my students, then I can use it and I understand uh, the way, uh, where I'm going, where I'm heading, and also my students by, putting PowerPoint, discussing quizzes, and we'll think about them later when we decide on the content of each model, I think the assessment will become accordingly. For me, for me in this model, I don't know, uh, Doctor, they have suggestion for that one, I'm not sure, because our colleagues here, maybe they are not from education background, uh, maybe sometimes we need to increase the dose a little bit. <laughs> for example, like, like when we talk about the constructive alignment, for example, when I design my course, even, even this workshop or even this type of new classroom, I think we cannot start from zero. Mm -hmm. We should, I think for me, uh, I'm thinking like this. So first learning outcome, then decide the content, then the strategy. So flipping classroom, it comes like number three, right? That how to implement the content to achieve the learning outcome that I put. Then I don't stop here. Then I said to myself, we have to go to the number four is to assist what I have done, right? The assessment pass. So this one, I think this is the alignment that I think I think myself that I should see in my in my own modules. Learning outcome, the content, the strategies using flipping classroom and other support and strategies. And the last one is how to assess and to ensure that my learning outcome have been achieved or not. If not, what should I do? If yes, how to continue and to have this type of reflection and the feedback that you have already shared with us, Dr. Lut, for, for that one. And the last point before the end, uh, I think that yes, group eight, we come to the, uh, this I still say about it, this one, and uh, this one we said about it. This, the last one here, the needs, yes, I think this we need the needs, I have talked about them. I could be uh, on the pillars as you shared with us to, to, we need in each area but i said we have uh, we need uh, for me we need more training on how to use each uh, take tools in tv victim in general and flip classroom in particular and uh, to be able to meet the needs of the 21st century learners and i think flipping classroom it comes here how to meet the needs of that one so these are the outcome that i like to have right when i apply uh, flip the classroom or the other things. Uh, honestly speaking, for the last, for the actual uh, modules, module one, two, three, four, five, till the end, I think I still need, uh, I still need uh, more time to go back and to really to understand the course again. And maybe our, our journey with you in this two months, maybe end in August, maybe can come out with at least the first or the initial draft. It'd be initial idea, but now I can change it to initial draft, right? Or the first draft of our models that we can apply in the allocated time given to us. I think this is what I have. I have other things, but I think I leave the time to get more uh, feedback uh, from you, Dr. Lut, and also from my colleagues. Hopefully, inshallah, it will be successful and will be done one day. Thank you very much. And sorry for taking much of the time. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kamal. It was uh, really a very good presentation. Um, hand claps, uh, indeed. Um, it, what I very much like is how you look at it from uh, all the perspectives. That is, in, to my opinion, so important. And the um, perspective of the context of yourself as a, as a professor, but also of the uh, students. Um, I think you also uh, see the process in a good way by, by uh, going from point A to point uh, Z, we could say. Um, what I also like very much and what is also so important in this um, flipped or blended learning, uh, when you do it together with, with colleagues, that you uh, you, you uh, told us that you see it as a teamwork uh, where uh, the ICT uh, people are involved, your team, the students, um, everyone is involved and everyone can help. So that is also so important. I said it in the first uh, presentation, you shouldn't all be um, specialized in everything. You can share your knowledge. You can uh, work on things to get, uh, together that is in my opinion, very important and will also be an outcome of this um, of this whole process we are going through. Um, that, can I? Maybe you. Uh, maybe I ask uh, Kamal to keep his presentation because there is questions. Maybe he will need it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank okay. you. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Um, then um, for your concerns about the students, uh, I think. Um, what we will um, learn also from this whole process is we have to make students the owners of their own learning. They are the owners. They are the ones who, who go through the process and um, who have to take the responsibility. And the responsibility will become higher. And the way we will come to the final, uh, final assignments will also uh, be different uh, than it was before uh, because something else now uh, came up for the last six months and I will um, unless uh, it is um, not permitted uh, uh, by your institutions I will also uh, introduce you to uh, artificial intelligence uh, because I think it's so important that as trainers you know what your students can do with it and that brings us to what you, um, uh, Professor Kamal, also um, um, had in mind. The final assignments have to be live. We are way more coming back to that again, because they can almost do, if I learn you a little bit of um, uh, prompt engineering in ChatGPT, which maybe um, sounds like Chinese to you now, but uh, will be very clear when I introduce you to it. You will see that your students can almost do everything with AI. And uh, we will have to, um, yeah, to look, and we are already doing it, uh, Lester and me are already training our colleagues and others um, to, uh, to use it in a good way. Uh, but um, I think for Belgium, for example, almost 60 to 80 percent of our students are using AI. So that brings uh, uh, the, the insight you gave us about that the final assignment be live. Uh, that is the right one. It will be necessary. I see we have a question from Dr. Murat. Dr. Bilal, Dr. Bilal, before Dr. Murad, please. I, I'm please. sorry, I don't see everyone. So, um, hey, Bilal, you, I, 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 I saw. Yeah, will, will you, uh, will you coordinate that for me, Nua? Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, yeah, welcome, Bilal. Bilal. Actually, uh, actually, I would like to thank Kamal for his nice presentation, and uh, at least I can figure out the puzzle now between the three. Uh, templates. So for me, it is like a backward design uh, to start with a big idea, then to go directly to the classroom while planning for the lesson using the storyboard. Uh, this is how I will uh, do it myself in my courses. Uh, 
uh, I will try to use the storyboard as uh, a lesson plan for each training session so that I can figure out how to make the distance learning active by adding some discussion forum or something like this, and also to, uh, to keep an eye uh, on the higher order thinking skills while working with the students face to face. So mm -hmm. this is my feedback and I would like to thank you again. Thank you, Rosbara. Thank you, Professor Bilal. Thank you so much. Um, Murad, you can uh, go on. Murad? Murad, you are muted. Murad? No? Now, yeah. Can yeah. you hear me now? Yes. Hello for everyone. Uh, first of all, let me uh, thanks every one of you. Uh, I'm appreciated. Uh, all particip participation from uh, all of my colleagues, my colleagues. Uh, and uh, let me emphasize on uh, many points uh, from what I heard here until now. Uh, I think that there is uh, four pillars of education and four pillars of uh, flip chart. So we have to put in mind that uh, in, when we are uh, talking about the flip chart, the classroom or uh, otherwise, we are talking about active learning. So uh, when, from what I see uh, from the content and the activities and the, all of these uh, things uh, in uh, two presentation that have done uh, before, uh, we have to put in mind that the most important issues in the flip chart is how to uh, deal with the time management because maybe the the time management of the uh, flip part class it's more important than the resources that we have to put in the uh, lecture itself so uh, flip chart classroom depends on what happened in the classroom instead of the lecture so you have to concentrate or to be uh, take in attention about these uh, most important issues, uh, because we know that uh, the uh, flip chart the classroom, it's uh, one type of the active learning. Uh, this is one point. Another uh, point that I wanted to concentrate on that uh, you, uh, it, 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 it not need to be all the class uh, as a flip chart uh, methods or uh, like the, you can choose to use this method in all or some of your class. So uh, some uh, classes or some uh, maybe uh, period or what you could say, it's not the to, to uh, deal with these types of uh, strategies. The most important things that, would, well, that I know for me for one minute, you have to decide uh, how you will use your class time and design the activities. So if you uh, decide how to use this, uh, this, this uh, class time and design the activities, it's maybe uh, one point. The other, uh, to find uh, and, uh, or create resources for the students uh, to use at home, because uh, the flip chart uh, main uh, elements, it's to replace the classroom time in the school with a uh, period on the in the home so you have to uh, create resources for students to use at home and the last things uh, to teach students how to use this material at home uh, flip chart it's not means that to leave the students uh, themselves uh, maybe need more and more and more to follow up with the students in aspects of evaluation assessment assignments and so on because we know that flip chart it's maybe a, flick, a flexible and uh, students take responsibility for their uh, learning. So you have to follow up. Uh, most of the frame that I have seen, it's uh, from a point of me, it's many, many uh, useful. Uh, maybe need uh, from a quality assurance uh, aspects, uh, ILOs uh, and so on, need some modification, but uh, I, I, I think that it's, uh, a good or excellent start point uh, to follow to follow up. 
Thank you very much for even, uh, uh, each one. Thank you, Dr. Murat. Um, what you say is so important. You, uh, you really confirmed what I told in the first uh, presentation on day one. So every of the points you, uh, you um, attempted now are all confirming uh, what was also told uh, in the first day. Uh, so these are indeed very important things. Thank you so much. And we take them into account. Thank you. Mm. You can you can go on uh, loot if you want to yes, give okay, uh, him good. feedback because uh, there is no questions. Yeah. Okay, Lester, do you have some comments to add? Um, yes, most of the things I wanted to add were already said. I think a lot of work is already done. Um, I think there's a lot of options and things you can learn in uh, technology wise, and we will teach you those for your online materials uh, to make your course interactive and that will be very important in this course i think to keep your students motivated and interacted with your course but that's about it thank you lester um yes uh professor kamal i i, I can add some more uh of the of the positive elements i uh i heard during your presentation uh, I think we have um, everything we, we needed for now, and uh, I'm looking forward to, um, to going with you through the whole process and to, uh, in two months, um, have at least a part of the dream, because it's really uh, a very beautiful uh, designed idea uh, that will um, uh, give the students the possibility to, uh, to learn more and to really become the owners of their own learning, as uh, also Dr. Murat uh, told us uh, that is so important. Uh, so uh, congratulations again, and you already did a, a very good job. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank, thank you, Dr. Lut and my colleagues for the constructive feedback. Thank you very much. Hope to see you and to improve. Thank you very much. Yes.